high school, the only place you'll find nerds and jocks chilling in the same room, where there's fight clubs and book clubs in the same building, where you can find the plug selling something and the school thought giving dome all in the same bathroom. And surely one of the few places you can pursue your educational prowess and take it off that Benjamin in the same institution. High school, man. Love it or hate it, it's quite the experience. And although every single person will have a different experience at high school, there are some things you are guaranteed to encounter. Like the PE sweat, the nerd, that one strict ass teacher, the teacher's pet, the redditor, the predator, the chill teacher, the plug, the stoner, that one motherfucker who walks like this, the class clown, the band kid, the kid who just never shows up. The hot Cheeto girl. That one sexy ass kid who <laughs> you got all the girls and you know what I'm saying? He was like super cool. The bathroom fiend. The oh my god, I almost failed that test. I did so bad. Oh shit, same. I got a 51%. What about you? Oh my god, I only got a 98.5. The fighter, the anime kid, and the NPCs. Every single one of these individuals make up the magical place we call high school. You come into high school merely a young, innocent, and clueless child, but you leave even more clueless than before, bro. Like when we learned about Pi in math class, my dumb ass thought I was in culinary arts for two goddamn weeks. And that is Pi. Ch Chains, are you listening? Yeah, yeah, we're learning about Pi. Mmm. Th then recite Pi. Uh, f flour, egg, to some fucking blueberry like coming into high school as a freshman i was thinking i can use my high school experiences and knowledge to figure out what i'm gonna do in life then shit all of a sudden i'm graduated and my brain is filled to max capacity on bullshit so now that you're graduated wh what are you gonna do with your life uh the the, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. But one of the most majestic parts of high school is the bathrooms, bro. Like, it's a proven statistic that only 1 in 30 kids actually go to the bathroom to take a piss. And Lord knows what the other 29 are doing, bro. I mean, it could literally be anything from a secret fight club to a drug ring to a fucking Bible study. Like, nothing is out of the picture when it comes to high school bathrooms, bro. But the bathrooms are not the only place where some fuck shit goes down. Because you know high school students love to see fights so when there's the slightest hint of beef there's a motherfucker instigating that shit oh oh shit my bad bro nah it's all good don't worry yo personally i wouldn't take that shit bro what nah nah it, it's fine like, he he practically just called you a bitch wait wait really no it, it was an wait, accident wait what's that oh shit he, he just said he's smoking on your grandma's pack right now hey d don't be talking about gram grams like that but tell me why when some entertaining shit happens, I just happen to miss school that day. Like, I'll go every day of the month, but I get sick for one day? Damn, I I'm glad as fuck I'm not at school right now. Yo. Holy shit, Chains, where are you? Uh, I'm in my bed right now, why? Ooh. Jeremy and Tom are running the ones right now. Fuck, the, the one day I didn't go. Wait, wait, what's that in the background? Oh, shit, yeah. Uh, they got little Uzi performing at school today. What? N Uzi's at our school? Yeah, check it out. Yo. Oh, and they brought in Gordon Ramsay cooking up free lunch today as well. Wh oh, and I uh, almost forgot. Uh, Elon's pulling up and giving what? everyone Teslas. So no, what? no. Uh, I'll see you later, man. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, high school is nothing like these movies painted out to be. Like, all these movies portray the same shit, where, where Victoria and her goon squad make fun of Ruby, and where, where Chad and the football team shove Arthur in a locker. Like, I've only seen a motherfucker get shoved into a locker once in my life, and to be honest, I, I couldn't even see much of it. I mean, it was pretty fucking dark in that locker, bro. But for real, in high school, you don't have to worry about some big body taking your lunch money or some football kid slapping the books out of your hand. The worst thing you'll encounter on your average day at school is your local redditor. I don't know how they do it, but somehow every joke they make is so unfunny that it just ruins my day, bro. Do you smell that? Yeah, Jeremy. That, that's what happens when you don't shower in two months. No, <laughs> it smells like sussy baka. <laughs> Like Among Us. <laughs> but not to confuse Redditors with Discord mods. I mean, they're pretty much the same thing, but Discord mods shower even less. 
To be honest, there is truly only one thing mustier than a Discord mod, and that's the cafeteria food, bro. I mean, this food is completely and utterly ass. Like, somehow these motherfuckers managed to get the food cold and the drinks warm. Like, how the fuck does that shit happen? And my high school would serve some daily specials, and to be honest, that shit was unidentifiable. Like, you'd see this pile of mysterious substance, and I'd ask the person who made it what it is. Like, <clears throat> uh, whoa, what's the special today you're holding it right now dumbass no but but like what is it oh <laughs> uh, i don't fucking know and my school refused to pay people to make good food so they had students making all the food so you'd be eating a burger and look up at the person making them and they'd just be casually scratching their ass and even with all this free labor tell me how these motherfuckers have the audacity to be charging six dollars for three chicken strips bro that's two dollars for one small soggy piece of S some shit that's probably not even chicken. I mean, that shit is a robbery. And speaking of robbery, the high school change rooms are shockingly similar to Detroit. And we all know, you can't have shit in Detroit. Like, if you leave anything not locked up, it's gone, bro. Your iPhone, gone. Five dollars, finessed. Two week old rotten sandwich someone's taking that shit and to be honest even if you lock that shit up it's still at high risk but like let me paint the picture a little bit this is pj pj locks all his beloved belongings in his good old pe locker before heading to play some soccer after scoring a hat trick pj comes back to the change room to reacquire his belongings only to find out someone took pj's whole goddamn locker pj was devastated until he remembers, he can check the school's security cameras. Yeah, uh, take a look. Yeah, take that shit, take that, yeah, we will, we will, we will. PJ never got his shit back. Now, I don't know about your guys' high schools, but mine was equipped with security cameras everywhere, covering every square inch of the school. But... These cameras had the resolution of a, of a fucking toaster. Like, you could have a motherfucker commit a heinous crime. He could proceed to put his face in the camera, state his government name, address, and date of birth, and you would still have no clue who did it, bro. And of course, the teachers. Teachers have the ability to make or break your high school experience. So real quick, let me go over some of the teachers you will encounter in high school. The angry teacher. The chill teacher. The lazy ad teacher. The funny ad teacher. The teacher who doesn't know how to teach shit. Miss Cake and Sin. The teacher who wants to be the chill teacher, but shit just it just doesn't work that teacher that plays videos all class the gym teacher with several allegations the weird science teacher and the teacher who subscribed to chains for real <laughs> wow what a g and that's high school in a nutshell all right i already touched on the unspeakable things that go down in the high school bathrooms bro but there's only one place on earth that is more foul than those bathrooms and it's the goddamn locker rooms that room smells like complete and utter dog shit mixed with axe spray like maybe i just went to school with a whole lot of discord mods but the rancid smell of the boys locker room would contaminate anything in a 50 foot radius and shit Lord knows what goes down in that questionable place. Like, you'll walk in there and see anything, bro. Motherfuckers will be having fights, chicken fights, group fights, sword fights. Like, any laws and rules simply don't apply to the boys' locker room. Motherfuckers will be throwing hands, selling drugs, committing arson, committing several counts of fucking tax evasion shit you name it it's pretty much a gta lobby in that bitch like i remember one day i walked into pe and my teacher was like hey no uh uh where's your pe strip and i was like shit it's in the locker room so i walk into the locker room and there's just two motherfuckers throwing hands and they just stop and look at me like oh shit uh I I'm, I'm gonna just get my backpack and shit so yeah uh, Alright, y'all be safe. And then they just went back to beating the shit out of each other. Now listen, I don't spend too much time in the girls' locker room, but anytime I walk by there... <laughs> That shit smells like rose petals and rainbows. So I can only imagine there's no group fights, no chicken fights. Uh, hopefully no fucking sword fights. And bro... You deadass can't leave shit in the locker room. Like, if you leave anything not locked up, 
it's gone these kids are ruthless bro they're snatching your wallet your phone your clothes shit they're taking your pb and j sandwich and the thing is if you want your pb and j back you're gonna have to get it back in blood because there's no laws in the locker room see if someone snatched my sandwich in math class i'm turning into 6-9 bro <clears throat> Mr. Cumminson, uh, J Jordan Johnson here who lives on 123 Stickman Drive, postal code STK53Z, just stole my peanut butter and jelly sandwich my mom made me, so I'ma need his ass suspended. But if you try to tell a teacher about anything that happened in the locker rooms, they don't give a fuck. M Mr. Principal, uh, J Jordan Johnson just stabbed me and stole my backpack, my phone, my wallet, and my ID. Damn, uh, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, where did this happen? It was in the locker room after P. Oh, you said the locker room? <laughs> You're just gonna have to get it back in blood. B b b b b b back in blood? What, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. The way you're snitching right now, uh, you kind of look like a bitch. But yo, one time me, Billy, and Bob were coming back to the locker room after some good old dodgeball and Billy notices a dude rummaging through his backpack. So he's like, yo, yo, w what are you doing, bro? <laughs> but when he turned around... Billy was bamboozled to find out the kid rummaging through his bag, he was special. And there was just this moment of silence. Yo, am I supposed to like, like beat his ass right now or, or, bro, I'm sure you didn't take anything. Just politely ask for your bag back. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, hey man, <laughs> can I get my bag back please? And the kid just, just hugged Billy and then he left. And I'm still confused to this day, but I'ma be honest, locker rooms weren't all that bad. Cause sometimes you'd walk in that hole and they would just be throwing a party. Now it still smells like ass and there was literally no females, but it was still kind of lit. Like you'd walk in there and it would transform into the club. Shout out my label, there's me. I'm in this bitch with TP. I'm in this bitch with all train. Or you'll walk in there and th they'll just be giving out free pizza. Like, like walking into the locker room is a gamble. You might walk in there and get robbed or, or you'll get some fucking pizza. I don't know. But what I do know is there's only 10 types of dudes in the locker room. Starting with that one kid who must have thought it was the 1800s the way he was whipping motherfuckers. Next, we got the poor guy who's just trying to change. He's quiet. He's normal and uh, he, he changes. It's a locker room, so it makes sense. Then we got that one poor soul who gets absolutely cooked by the entire locker room. Yo, why is Kevin built like Mike Wazowski? <laughs> Bro's got no neck. <laughs> We're stick men. None of us have neck. Shut up. You skip neck. Yo, he skips oh. neck. Next, we got Bob. Bob's just that guy that casually takes his shirt off and he's built like Giga Chad. Like, shit. Fucking sexy ass Bob. <clears throat> and I don't know why, but there was always that one guy who thought it was a good idea to just, just whip his nuts out. Unprovoked. Uncalled for. Completely out of pocket. Like, what do you look like with your nuts out in a room with 30 half-naked sweaty dudes? Like, personally, in that situation, I'm keeping my balls in my boxers. Thank you very much. And bro, tell me why there was always one kid who was just dousing himself in axe spray. And it's always the mustiest motherfucker doing it, too. Like, who's gonna tell him that Axe Spray doesn't replace taking showers, bruh? And I don't know about your locker room, but for mine, there was always a dude eating. Like, out of all the places on Earth, why are you eating in the locker room? Like, for some reason, there's something about eating around a bunch of dudes in their boxers that just doesn't sit right with me. I mean, simply by bringing that sandwich into the locker room makes it contaminated. That sandwich will be tasting like wet dog and axe spray. And next, we got the kid who just makes as much noise as humanly possible. Shut the yeah, fuck shut the up. God, damn. And then there's that one dude who decides he's having a shower. And all power to that guy, but personally... There is no fucking way I'm showering in school. Like, I can't trust this little door to stop these menaces from breaking into my shower. Because remember, there's no laws in the locker room. Like, it's no jail, but 
I'm sure if you drop the soap in there, you're gonna get violated. And of course you got the fiend. There's always a dude fiending for a vape in every locker room. And it's low key worse in the locker room than the bathrooms. Like these locker room fiends would do a little bit too much for some nicotine. I've seen them pay $5 for a single hit and fuck. I don't want to know what they'll do for a hit when they run out of money. And still, I'm not gonna lie, the high school bathrooms get wild. They'll be hotboxed, there'll be fight clubs, but the thing about the bathrooms is a teacher can walk in at any time and get every student suspended. Like even the poor kid taking a piss will probably get suspended just by association. Which is exactly why the high school locker rooms get so fucking rowdy. Because there's truly no teacher strong enough to stop the buffoonery that goes on in these locker rooms. So they don't even try. Shit, I don't care if your teacher is John Cena. There is no single man who can put a stop to the fuck shit that goes down in the locker rooms. But there is one thing that can a female man there's a lot of questionable places on earth like the Bermuda Triangle or Area 51 or even this place but none of these places can compare to the questionability of high school. And so inevitably, there's some weird ass kids in that joint. Like you gotta be careful who you talk to bro, cause you approach the wrong student and shit. You're getting cussed out by a pack of hyenas in social studies class. And usually I never care what other people do, like you do you, you know what I'm saying? But when I gotta sit through that shit for 6 hours a day, 5 days a week, shit. Can you stop doing you for like 5 minutes bro? And speaking of annoying kids, there's always that one kid in class who's constantly gargling on the teacher's meat. Like, we'll be finishing up the last class on a Friday, and of course the teacher's pets gotta say some shit like, M Mr. Cumminson, is there no homework for us to complete over the weekend? Oh, well, 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 no, uh, believe it or not, I'd rather not spend my weekend marking your shitty ass little essays. So. Don't worry, Mr. Cumminson, I can help you mark essays all weekend long. Whoa, 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 I isn't that against school policy? Well, what's against school policy? Riding Mr. Cumminson's dick with no license? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're not allowed to swear. And of course, the class clown. And man, I really just gotta commend him for his work. Like, it's not an easy job being the class clown. Dude throw his entire GPA, future, and probably got his shit whooped on multiple occasions just to keep the class entertained. Like, I'll be rotting in English class, but to fall asleep until the class clown starts cooking the teacher for no apparent reason. And next, we're looking at adjectives. Uh, does anyone have any good examples? Yeah, uh, Jason. Uh, bald as shit. Oh, well, shit. no, that, that's actually three words. No, 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 I wasn't even using an example. You're just so goddamn bald, Yo, it's distracting. God hey, damn. you know what they say. The more hair I lose, the more head I get. Stop <laughs> <the cat> <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't think that's true, Mr. Clean, because you got more hair than you got hoes. And that says a lot with your Caillou looking ass. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> just go to detention, man. And you know we got the Redditor, bro. Now, don't be deceived, Redditors can come in all shapes and sizes, uh, especially the extra large size, and uh, and even the extra extra large size, but regardless, they all have the same programming encoded into their brains. They're either talking about a video game, or they're quoting a meme, bro. And I got a little piece of advice to any Redditors out there. I don't care how funny that shit may be in your head, if you have to verbally describe what a meme looks like, for your sake, just don't say it, bro, because I promise you that joke will not not hit and next up we got darren presenting a slideshow on 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 why elon musk is is poggers uh yeah uh wh whenever you're ready <laughs> me standing in front of the class waiting to present <laughs> you, you know that meme where mike wazowski is standing there in an awkward fashion with his his hands by his side and he's got like two eyes <laughs> <laughs> Now there really is levels to being a redditor, and don't get me wrong, they're not all that bad, but the ones that got that I paused my game to be here T paired up with the beer belly neck beard combo, <laughs> that shit is lethal. And if you press E to interact with one of these bad boys, you'll get stuck in an endless time loop hearing about Among Us memes and hentai. Now the band kids are like the redditor's second cousin, like, like it's all the same shit, but, but bro just knows how to play a tuba. Now on the opposite side of the spectrum, we got the dudes who touch grass. 
the athletes. Now, I feel like these dudes got a bad reputation when it comes to the jock stereotypes from the movies. Because the ratio of athletes shoving nerds in lockers is, is probably like 1 in 75. And the one was, was most likely just having a bad day. Speaking of bad days, getting shoved in a locker really has a way of ruining your day. And you really gotta feel bad for the nerds who have to endure this type of harassment every single day. Well, actually, it's only every other Tuesday after their football practice. Yeah, but you shouldn't have to be be shoved in a locker at all you you shouldn't have to be that's grammatically incorrect it's actually supposed Man, to be you shouldn't shut be shut the f there's really just three types of smart people the first dude you wouldn't even be able to tell bro's smart because he's just lazy as fuck he'd be acing every test using one percent of his brain power like he's got that elon musk potential but shit he just doesn't really feel like being a billionaire today or on the other hand we got the weirdly political and argumentative smart dude this guy used up all his iq points on logic and reasoning and completely forgot to upgrade his social awareness because this is the kind of guy that everyone mutually agrees is just annoying as fuck like you can't do shit around this dude without him trying to start an argument yo chains you think i sink this half court shot Bro, there is no chance you make that shit. Bup, 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 bup. You are incorrect. No chance implies that statistically there is a 0% chance that it goes in, which is wrong as others have made this exact shot before Billy. <gasps> Truthfully, there's a chance for just about anything to happen, even though the chances may be slim. Well, that's cap, because there's no chance for you, bro. N no chance for me to what? You gotta be more specific. For, for you, you to, to get, get some, some bitches. bitches! And some people are just smart, and they still have the ability to be a normal functioning member of society. A lot of these people are chill as fuck. Like, they can teach you shit you don't understand, carry you in group projects, and if they're goaded, they can just bless you with the homework. And this is not the same as is getting your homework from the class clown or the athlete because this shit is actually correct and next we got the other dudes who touch grass the stoners <laughs> Why are you looking at me? There's always a dude posted up in the back of the class who's visually fried as fuck. You'll commonly see him posted up with a snack of some sort and you know they never forget the bev. Now you don't want this dude's homework because I promise you we will just have a bunch of doodles with some mushrooms and this graffiti S and somehow these motherfuckers will manage to take a multiple choice test and get every answer wrong. Like it's actually kind of impressive when you think about it. But besides that, they're just cool people. But I'm not gonna lie, I can't really say the same about the hot Cheeto girls, bro. Like, these girls put in an effort to be as loud as possible. Like, lord forbid, if one of these girls breaks one of their long-ass nails, it doesn't matter if you sit on the opposite side of the class, you're gonna hear about it. You're also gonna hear them chewing those hot Cheetos, cause they be lip-smacking like crazy. Speaking of smacking, there's always that one kid in school who simply enjoys smacking motherfuckers. And at my school, it was Jordan John. And if you see my high school fights video, that's why you don't mess with me, yo. I'm Jordan Johnson. Or my high school dances video. Johnson. You would know Jordan Johnson keeps a solid ass record, but it's at the point where bros fought so many people that nobody really even fucks with them. Cause now it's like either you fought Jordan Johnson or your homies fought Jordan Johnson, and either way, it's fuck Jordan Johnson. But all bias aside, you just got to appreciate the top tier, high value entertainment that JJ brings to the school. Like after a long day of calculus and chemistry, there's nothing like watching a dude get Batista bombed in front of the whole school and speaking of the whole school 75 percent of the whole school are straight npcs and there's nothing wrong with it it is what it is because honestly i love you for that I couldn't be happier to share the school with you, my man. Because I'm not going to lie. I don't think I would survive a school without NPCs. The sheer amount of Redditors, Hot Cheeto Girls, and Teacher's Pets? <sighs> Fuck. I'd rather be homeschooled at that point. But all jokes aside, man, every student plays a crucial part of the high school experience. So remember to appreciate... Man, you could be the 47th president of the United States and you'd still get flamed in school. It's just inevitable. It could be your haircut, your clothes, and bro, even when there's nothing to roast, somebody's gonna try and spit out some bullshit anyways. Hey, yo, why does Carl's face look like Spider-Man's left nut? <laughs> yo, it's so cheap. <laughs>
you, why do you know what his nuts look like? And bro, when I was in middle school, all my clothes were hand-me-downs I got from my neighbor. And this motherfucker just didn't want to see me win, bro. Because I was getting piles of V-neck shirts and jeans that didn't even fit. And not only did my neighbor have no drip, but dude was 10 years older than me. So every fit I made was just a decade too late. And pulling up to school and that shit had me feeling like a rotisserie chicken. The way I was getting cooked at a 360 degree angle, bro. But my fit wasn't even the only thing that was outdated because my phone looked like the first phone ever created and it acted like it too i mean i would have to click the screen five times and then send a prayer to the heavens just to turn that shit on and only real g's know the pain of having to whip out an old ass phone around someone else like i remember this one time a girl came up to me and asked if she could add me on snapchat and when i gave her my phone my shit crashed bro uh i think your phone just ran out of battery oh no <laughs> don't worry sometimes you just got to yeah, here you go. Uh, actually, I have a boyfriend, so... Wait, I'm just wait, gonna... wait, no, wait, 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 what gonna... the fuck? And ever since that day, that phone was my number one op, bro. So much so that the next time a girl came up and asked for my Snapchat, I, st I started fucking malfunctioning, bro. Hey, c can I get your Snapchat? Uh, uh no. Oh. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, no, no, no. It's just it's just because uh, I don't have Snapchat. Oh, well, what, what about your phone number? I actually don't even have a phone. You don't have a phone? Oh, well, well I, d I did, but th then my dog ate it. You know oh, my God. Saying? Is your dog okay? Uh, sorry, I, I don't even have a dog. I don't I don't have one. Then uh, uh who ate your phone? Oh, uh, fucking, <laughs> I did. Ah. <laughs> uh... Wait, was that? Nope. Like, I do appreciate all the hand-me-downs, because without them, I would be walking through the school butt-booty naked. But to be honest with you, if it was a choice, I would have rather been butt-booty naked. Because these v-necks were straight girl repellent. Like, there's birth control, there's condoms, and then there's v-necks, bruh. But shit, I, I mean, you could still pull a lot while wearing a v-neck, but it's just like... It's just gonna be dudes. And just when you think I couldn't have been more roastable, my mom will be like, Oh, sweetie, you need a haircut. No, 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 please, mom, no, no, no. My mom used to take me to this shop that gave out $1 haircuts, bro. And these motherfuckers were straight speed running these cuts. They'd be asking what kind of cut you want while cutting your hair. And by the time you get to show them the cut you want, your shit is already done, bro. And my mom must have not been tipping them either, considering the fact that every time I went back, the cuts kept getting worse and worse. Until one time, I walked out there with my head bleeding, like I asked for a two on the sides, and she hit me with a negative two. Now, don't get me wrong, when I pulled up to school, wearing the most abominable fit known to man with the atrocious haircut and shitter phone combo i got my shit roasted flamed grilled sauteed deep fried and then thrown into the goddamn microwave like the type of flaming that has you going home and just taking an extensive look in the mirror questioning if you should legally change your name to albert and flee the country. But somehow, this motherfucker Carl got flamed even harder than me just for being Carl. Like, whenever a friend group is created, there's just one dude selected to be the punching bag for the entire group. And you know, I feel bad and shit, but like... It's better Carl than me, bro, so I'ma slip a few jabs in if I have to. Yo, what the fuck is Carl eating, bro? Oh, oh, hell no. Nah. Wait, whoa, whoa, Chains is eating the exact same thing. Nah, what? <laughs> Your shit looks like it tastes like cardboard with honey mustard <laughs> wow how did you know like carl can't even get a little chuckle out without getting crucified bruh damn he's fucking that shit oh looks like he hasn't eaten in <laughs> weeks bro <laughs> oh hell no nah, carl i know you're not laughing yeah n n i'm not you're built like spongebob brown pants you, you look like a malnourished santa claus bro like god Damn, that's a face only a mother can love. W what did I do? Now, getting roasted around your boys is tough, but that pales in comparison to the pain and embarrassment of getting roasted in front of your crush, bro. Yo, Chains, what did you get on the science test? I I'm not gonna lie, I got like a 76. <laughs> I'm surprised you're not smarter with that big ass head of yours. <laughs> Good one, Joe. No, like for real, your shit is massive. Well, like the sheer amount of brain you could fit in that bitch should make you Einstein. You look like you should be pulling 10,000 IQ plays right now. You look like you got the solution to world hunger somewhere hidden in that big ass noggin. Like, like how do you even stand up straight with that absolute cranium for a head? But I remember this one time I got my shit flamed so hard in front of an entire audience that I was brought to tears. But I mean, I was sick. 
I was six years old. And the day was December 24th, Christmas Eve. So my mom brought me and my brother to this improv play. And as we sat and waited for the show to begin, this little elf walked up to us like, Hey, do, do you guys want to be a part of the show? Yeah, let, let's uh, do it. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. And once the show began, they called me and my brother up to the stage and asked us a very simple question. So, uh, what do you guys want for Christmas? Oh, I want a Minecraft sword and a creeper stuffy. And, uh, well, what about you, little man? And as I looked into that crowd with dead silence, my brain stopped braining, bro. Hey, uh, don't worry, it can be anything. Um, ah, uh, shit. Uh, I want, um, um, just kid, w w what do you want? I want, uh, man, I, I just... I, 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 I wanna... Fuck off the stage, I don't even know what I want. Yo, who brought this fucking dumbass on stage, bro? Get the fuck out of here. Now, now I'm paraphrasing. Now, I mean, I was six. I don't remember exactly what he said, but that's what it felt like. And as we walked back to our seats, I was super embarrassed. But as the show started, it was actually pretty funny, and people had probably forgot about it by now. But ten minutes into the show, a character walks on stage with some goofy-ass buck teeth. Yo, this guy looks stupid as hell <laughs> oh shit and this dude proceeds to absolutely cook six-year-old me with no remorse hey what's your name um uh, I, I don't know what uh, okay uh, how's your day D day D day w w what the fuck is a day i, I don't know what well, what do you know no no, that's just it. I don't know. I, I just don't know. Shit, I don't think I know anything. And that shit had the whole audience laughing harder than ever. And as I looked around, my brother was laughing and even my mom was laughing. And it was this very moment that I had hit rock bottom. And at the age of six, I realized that I would be put on this earth simply to suffer. And and it made me cry, bro. I cried in the middle of this theater. And the next morning I woke up and it was Christmas. And under the Christmas tree, I saw the best gift of all. It was a Bob Pocket tee from Chains Club Doll Shop. That's right, it's brand new. You could wear it around your homies. You could wear it at school. You could wear it around your mom, your grandma, your great grandma, maybe not your great grandma, but damn near anywhere else. And Bob will be posted in your pocket the whole time. Wow, what a perfect thing to get someone for Christmas. Am I right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I I'm right. There's a lot of awkward things in life, like the handshake fist bump dilemma, or waving back to someone who is waving to the dude behind you, or the you too situation. Enjoy your meal, sir. Thanks, you too. Actually, wait, 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 no, no, no. But on this long list of things that will keep you up at night, I feel like school dances lands itself in the top three, bro. Cause it's like, is it a party or is it a school event? Are, are we hitting the duggy or are we just standing awkwardly in the corner? There's just too many questions, bro. Like another question, who the fuck hired this guy to be the DJ? Like, I don't know how much they pay this dude, but it can't be anything over 50 bucks. I remember at my first middle school dance, I seen the DJ walk in with all his gear and shit and I thought, damn, look at those big ass speakers this dude knows what he's doing for sure hey hey stick man middle are we ready to turn up yeah oh, let's go. one two a one two three let's go so i walk over there to give bro some song requests that he so desperately needs and as i walk up to this dude's expensive ass setup i look down at his laptop and this motherfucker's on spotify and he, he's moving around the volume slider like he's doing some shit like bro i could have done this shit for free nah trust me bro i know what i'm doing dude Wanna break from the ads? Now, to be honest, it was really the middle school dances that had me fucked up. Like, you took a bunch of self-conscious, prepubescent little kids and threw on some music and told them to dance with each other. Like, shit, of course they're gonna start hitting those Fortnite emotes, bro. That's all they know how to do. Like, these grade sixes are fresh out of elementary school. There's no way you'll catch one of these youngins asking a girl to dance. Like, they're still scared of catching cooties, bro. Or what about the grade sevens? These kids were straight menaces. Like, I remember at my grade seven, 
dance, there was a duo. We'll call them, we'll call them Greg and Roderick. Greg and Roderick would run up on some unsuspecting students and Greg would slide behind them on his hands and knees and Roderick would casually strike up a conversation. And just when the poor guy was expecting it least, Roderick would shove his ass causing the unsuspecting victim to trip and eat shit. And they went around to damn near everyone pulling this shit until one time they messed with the wrong dude. <laughs> hey bro, it's just a prank. Now grade eights. These boys are damn near in high school. They don't dance. It it'll ruin their street cred, bruh. Instead, they prefer mosh pits. Rap, EDM, fucking smooth jazz. It doesn't matter what song. These grade eights will be relentlessly jumping up and down for no apparent reason. And soon, these grade eights will turn into freshmen. All that street cred they once had, gone. If you push one of these freshmen into the middle of a dance circle, he'll stress so hard, he'll start malfunctioning and hit those fucking Fortnite dances again. Now grade 10s. Most of these grade 10s are a little self-conscious, but if you throw one of them into the dance circles... Let's go, Michael. Whoa, let's see it. Yeah, let's go. go. <laughs> Guys, what? I, I don't know how to dance. dance Michael. Do it. Let's, let's go, go Michael. Fuck. Well, I guess I can bust out a few dance moves. All of a sudden, dude's got moves like Jagger. Come to find out, bro's been practicing him for this moment in his room for months so once these grade 10s soon become sophomores those youtube tutorials start paying off for real and if they're lucky they might even catch some cooties bro and these seniors just simply don't give a fuck bro watch this i'm about to hit the worm what you know how to hit the worm <laughs> no Damn. And I'm not done flaming this fucking DJ. Like, this dude be leaving my balls more blue than Squidward. Pause. These bitches lost. Oh, oh hell. Nah. It, is that lo fi? And then out of nowhere, really quick, the DJ will throw on some heat and it'll have everybody turning up. But just as fast as Pop Smoke got that shit jumping, Ed Sheeran shut that bitch right back down. Like, mixing drill with the shape of you has to be some sort of felony, bro. Like, like tell me this dude deserves to roam the streets freely after pulling some shit like that. In fact, funny story, I, I had seen the DJ after the dance in the parking lot one time and um, we walked up and uh, we jumped the fuck out of him. Alright, but not all DJs were out here committing war crimes on my ears. Like, you know the DJ was onto some shit when he got the students and the teachers turning up. Like, you play the right song and these teachers will forget they're on chaperoning duty. Shit, even the principal will start wilding out. Once you got the right song playing, motherfuckers will get hype over over anything like remember how hype it was when someone would land a flip in the middle of a mosh pit shit remember how hype it was when someone didn't land a flip in the middle of a mosh pit these motherfuckers were excited as ever like they didn't just witness a dude snap his neck poor guy's probably getting trampled down there rest in peace sacrifice his life for a few snapchat memories but you know that one song that when the dj throws that hoe on everybody knows what to do motherfuckers will run in from the bathroom teachers will hop in the redditors will hop off the bleachers and the school dance will be looking like something straight out of high school musical bro speaking of high school musical back in the day i knew a dude named troy i fucked with troy but let's just say he had a little bit of a lean gut he, he was built like t grizzly nah fuck that he was built like dj khaled and i remember this dude troy was just coming off a of school suspension but for whatever reason at the dance this motherfucker must have been looking for another, another one because troy came up to me talking about how he was gonna beat jordan johnson's ass at the dance tonight and honestly I ain't believing him. So once the dance came around, he was beefing JJ every chance that he got until soon JJ wasn't gonna stand for it. Now a school dance is simply the best time for a school fight to take place for the dude who wins. For the dude who loses, you literally have every single motherfucker in your school gathered in one place to get several different 4K angles of you getting pieced up. So Troy was really putting everything on the line here because JJ was known for handing out whoopings like food stamps. But to be fair, Troy loved food. Regardless, JJ wasn't scared. In fact, he threw the first punch. Boom. But Troy ate that shit like a Wendy's 4 for 4 combo. And instantly, the entire school gathered in a circle. The circle was so big, there was no escaping. They were gonna have to fight to the death. But the DJ was so locked in that he was completely oblivious to what was happening. He was playing some happy-go-lucky ass shit. Oh shit! Ooh. 
Damn. Yo. Get his ass. Let's go. Please. Beat his Yo, ass, Troy. JJ. Yo, I'm Jordan Troy. Johnson. Now, the moral of that story is uh, to don't get into a fight at the school dance. Uh, unless you know you're gonna win. Now on another note, asking someone to dance is a very important topic when it comes to school dances. Now girls, I I'm sorry, I can't help you with this one. I've never asked a dude to dance before. But boys, shit, I can't help you either. I I'm like over 15 with this shit. But I do know someone who can. I'm talking about the homie Bob. So Bob, uh, how do you ask a girl to dance? W watch and learn. I... What, is this motherfucker moonwalking right now? Oh, oh shit. Oh, what the, what the fuck? Man, summer is just a beautiful season. The sun is shining, the trees are green, and you can stay out with your homies all night. And best of all, you get to sleep in till that shit gets absolutely fucked by the first day of school. And waking up to that first alarm of the school year will have you discombobulated as hell. Like, chains, square doodle mat salami mouse. Mm. What? <sighs> you heard me, square doodle mat salami mouse. Wait. Wait, huh? Really? Key Torch Claw Bosomorph. Man, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah! What the fuck? And even though getting out of bed early hurts your soul, it's absolutely necessary you spend at least five minutes staring at your wall, contemplating your entire life. And if you're a real G, you laid out your toughest fit the night before, so you're low-key hyped to rock that shit to school. So you throw on your new shoes and flick up for the first day of school. And then you walk over to the establishment where you will not only pursue your educational prowess, but you may also dabble in what some call stunting on these hoes and man i will say linking up with your boys on the first day of school just hits different like i be reuniting with the homies like i didn't just see him 12 hours ago and we're all happy and shit until the school bell reminds me i just got my ass locked up for another 10 months and i don't know about y'all but i don't think i've ever made it to my first class of the year on time like it'll be 9 15 and my dumb ass will still be trying to figure out how to make it to room 347 by 8 55 and walking into your first class of the year late has to be one of the most uncomfortable situations you can experience, bro. Because the teacher will be like, oh, and who are you? Oh, uh, I I'm Chains. Well, Chains, why are you late? Uh, b because the bell rang before I got here. <sighs> All right, whatever. We waited for you before we started introductions. Oh, no, you shouldn't have. Well, you're welcome. We just wanted you to feel... No, like, you, you really shouldn't have, like... I don't want to do this shit. And tell me why all these teachers have been copy-pasting the same icebreaker games since preschool. Like that one where you have to start with an adjective that starts with the same letter as your name. Like, how do you have a group of legal adults in a circle, awkward as hell, talking about... Uh, hi guys. I'm, I'm Super Sarah. Hey, hey y'all. <laughs> I'm, I'm Awesome Aiden. And I'm... Um, I'm a marvelous Marvin. Shit, if we don't stop doing these fucking icebreakers, I'm about to joyfully jump off a cliff. And after we're done grinding out icebreakers, these teachers have the audacity to show a whole 50 slide PowerPoint all about them. Like the fuck? This class is supposed to be the study of math, not the study of your daughter's soccer games, bro. And I'm not even gonna lie, my dumb ass will be out there taking notes, wondering how this seven-year-old's goals per game ratio is gonna help me on my trigonometry test. Then just as soon as you survive all that bullshit, you gotta go to the next class and do that shit again. And by the time you've learned half your teacher's favorite hiking spots and relationship statuses, you're relieved to hear the lunch bell. Only to find out the cafeteria's serving straight ass with a side of booty for lunch. And my standards aren't even high. Like during summer, I was on a seafood diet as they would say. When I see food, 
I eat that shit. But when it comes to this cafeteria food, I could even bring myself to smell that abomination they're calling meatloaf. But even though the food was straight dokey, I won't lie, it's kind of nice being back at the lunch table freestyling with the homies. But of course, all good things must come to an end. So the bell rings and I go to depart ways with the homies. All right, peace out, man. Yeah, see you, bro. Oh, shit. Oh, are we going the same way? Damn, yeah, I guess so. All right, peace out for real. Yeah, yeah, see you, bro. <clears throat> shit. All right, my class is right here, bro. Me too. Oh, shit. Let's go. Uh, all right, class. I'm going to be taking some attendance. Uh, correct me if I get your name wrong. Uh, Jason. Here. Uh, Billy. Yo. Megan. Present. Chains. Here. Charlie. That's me. Bob. No fucking bro. way. I is there any is there any Bobs in the room? Yo. Yo, do you do you hear that? Is that intro music? Does anyone here know a bar? Oh, 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 Man, nothing beats a class where you got all the boys sitting together. Like, from the jump, you already know you're all about to fail the fuck out of that shit. But it's gonna be fun as hell. Alright, so, uh, everyone introduce yourselves and tell us what you did over summer break. Uh, m m my name's Bartholomew. <laughs> My, my name's Bartholomew, and I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, uh, I had a pretty rough summer, I mean, I crashed my car, my girlfriend broke up with me, someone robbed my house, my grandma got jumped the other day. <laughs> no, bro, not the grandma. You three in the back, disrespectful. And what's crazy about the first day of the school year is how these teachers will act all nice talking about, it's so lovely to see all your beautiful faces, and it's also nice to see you, Aiden. Wait, 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 wait. what the fuck? We're gonna have have an amazing fun year and guess what there's no homework today knowing damn well they're about to make up for it with twice as much homework tomorrow like they'll for real be handing out kindergarten ass coloring sheets the first day and then tomorrow you're getting your ass whooped by some calculus worksheets and i didn't even talk about the motherfuckers you'll be seeing in the halls on the first day like i don't know what these dudes be going through in those two months but motherfuckers be going from arthur kennedy to ak real fast bro Oh shit, is that you, Arthur? Oh, gee, don't be dropping the government name like that. G gov government name? But that's just your first name. Hey, fam, it's AK. Uh, I, I, man, what you been up to, bro? Hey, fam, I'm trapping trying to make it out of the mud, you know? The, the, the mud? You live in a gated community. Oh shit, that's the ops right there, fam. Get down. The, the ops? That, that's just fucking Edward. Or the way these new freshmen be walking like they're scared a senior's gonna slap the books out of their hands and take their Fortnite V-Bucks gift card. Like, bro, you freshmen are worried about the wrong V-Card. Like, I don't know why, but the day these kids go from sophomore to seniors, they instantly decide to pull an EDP. Like, bro... You're 18 and she's fresh out of middle school. That's a whole crime. But that's not the only crime motherfuckers be committing on the first day of school. Some dudes be pulling up to school with the most atrocious fits known to man. Like there's no fucking way you laid out this ramen noodle chicken soup ass fit the night before, slept on it, then woke up and thought, oh yeah, the, the hoes are gonna love this one. Like I'm not gonna lie, you could never catch me wearing the types of fit these motherfuckers be wearing bro like that shit should have never made it out the closet like i don't condone bullying but all i'm gonna say is your actions have consequences bro speaking of consequences every year it seems like the rules teachers tell you on the first day keep getting more strict like you'll be walking into the first class of the year all jolly and shit all of a sudden you're getting your shit smacked by the longest list of class rules you've ever seen hey class i'm super excited to have you we're gonna have so much fun this year but first i'm gonna go over some of the class rules okay so there will be no negativity no phones no food no talking when i'm talking Actually, no talking ever, no laughing, no smiling, breathe as quiet as possible, no washroom breaks, and last but not least, no having fun. So yeah, guys, like I said, I think we're gonna have a lot of fun this year. And just like that, man, summer's over and you're back to school. It's possibly one of the worst times of the year. Like, do you really think it's a coincidence that when school starts up, the sun just starts hiding and the leaves start dying? You, you see what I'm implying? But I will say, one day you might just look back back on these times is the good old days and you might just start crying all right class today we're going outside for a run but what 
It, it's literally zero degrees. Oh, Chains, don't be a bitch. It's not even that cold. See, I told you guys it's not even that cold. Yeah, for you. Cause you're out here dressed like the Michelin man. High school PE is something different. And every PE class has five different types of people. Like the group of kids who just stand in the corner and occasionally get sniped in the head with a dodgeball. Or the kids who participate and make sure everyone is included. Or the legend who's chilling on Instagram. <clears throat> he uh, he follows at Chains for real. <clears throat> There's also the dude who just never shows up, and of course we got the sweats. These motherfuckers treat PE like they're in the military. These motherfuckers treat PE like they're training for the Olympics. These motherfuckers treat PE like they're gonna get scouted to the league, which is honestly just funny as hell. Because let's be honest, 85.7 percent of the class doesn't even want to be there. So you'll have some innocent souls zoning out during a basketball game, and all of a sudden they'll be getting posterized like they're playing against Ja Morant. Yeah, bitch! I mean, these kids will come out of PE drenched in sweat, breathing heavy, and with a smile on their face, knowing they dropped 104 points on some kids who have never touched a basketball in their life. And listen, don't hate me, but I do understand the appeal of sweating your balls off in PE. Because I too once participated in the sweaty activities. Oh, Ow. Okay. Ow. I know, I know, but there's just something so exhilarating about hearing the snapping of an unsuspecting freshman's ankles. But as I matured, I realized there was only one thing better than shitting on random students. And that was shitting on sweats. I became the anti-sweat. I would act like an innocent soul waiting to get posterized, but when the sweat would come in trying to end my career with a windmill dunk, I stuffed that boy like a Thanksgiving turkey. Pause. And don't get me started on the, the fit fitness grand pacer. Whoever created this legal form of torture will catch these hands. Oh, Chains, no, no, I, I heard he sadly passed away a little while ago. You could be having a good day and you pull up to PE like, Hey bro, you know what we're doing today? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure, but I think we're playing soccer. The fitness no, it, it can't be. Alright class, today we will be doing the beep test. Fuck. <gasps> Woo. Damn, damn, what was I at? Uh, Chains, uh, what, we haven't even started. That was, uh, that was just our warm-up. But one thing that did bring me a little bit of joy was looking at everyone during the push-up section. Like, there was always some dude doing the neck push-ups, some dude who thinks he's Mike Tyson, <laughs> the guy who takes breaks when the teacher isn't watching, and there was always at least one dude who was out here looking like he was hitting it raw. Uh, James, I, I, I don't think that's how you do it. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, bitch! Alright, next up we got Billy presenting his baking soda volcano experiment. <laughs> hey, hey guys, how we doing? Alright, so, uh, you see if I put a, a solid amount of baking soda in here and then uh, a little bit of vinegar here. <clears throat> um... Uh, it's supposed to explode. Oh, oh shit. fuck! Quickly, organize a single file line in alphabetical order. Hey, I'm first. No, you're not, bro. I'm first. Your last name is literally Johnson. I have two last names. Listen, bro, I'm not saying we shouldn't have school drills and all, but what I am saying is the school drills we do have are straight bullshit. Like, if there was a fire in my class, I'm jumping straight out the window, the fuck? There is no way you'll catch me waiting for Alexander and Arnold to debate who's first in line while well, I'm out here getting sauteed. And shit, fire drills aren't even close to being the worst of the drills, cause we got lockdown drills. Now I don't know who planned out these drills, but god damn these drills are ass. Now if you never had lockdown drills, they're pretty much a foolproof plan set in place to completely counter anyone pulling up to school with a strap. You see, the plan is pretty simple. You lock the door, gather all the students into the corner of the class, and you turn the lights out and the reason we turn the lights out is so we can politely tell the intruder that nobody's home now if every classroom followed these steps perfectly we might even be able to convince the dude that it's a pro d-day or something now listen i hate to be the bearer of bad news i really do but there's one minor flaw in this plan 
the, the, the shooter's in the class, bro. You're out here telling the opposition your exact game plan. Then you're surprised when bro pulls up to the hiding spot. Like, shit, it's just easy pickings at this point. Now, earthquake drills, man. The game plan here is to essentially hop under your desk and start counting. Now, when I was in kindergarten, I thought this whole earthquake drill thing was a fun game we played to learn how to count. But 12 years later, we were still counting. Like, let's be honest. What the fuck is counting gonna do? Are you telling the earthquake how long it has to dismantle the school because i'm pretty sure it doesn't give a shit how long it takes me personally i feel like the best way to see if an earthquake is over is by observing whether or not the entire fucking building is shaking but listen i will say this out of all the drills the earthquake drill is pretty valid like whoever thought of this one was kind of cooking i mean these desks are pretty much made out of steel bro like out of all my years i've never seen one break before so it probably provides some solid protection but shit me personally i'm still jumping through the fucking window bruh i don't care how many times i practice crouching under my desk if i ever felt the slightest shake in the ground i'm out of that hole so if you carry the 674 to the power of two over to the 47 you will find oh shit what well, well why did change just dive out of the window Shit, I don't know. Now I'm gonna keep it a stack. I've never done a single tornado drill in my life. So after doing some quick research, it looks like you just, um, you, you, you do this. Now I don't know shit about tornadoes, but what I do know is that I'm not gonna be doing this shit. Like, I'm no scientist, but I don't think the doggy position is gonna stop the tornado from packing you up. So to be honest, once again, I'm jumping out the fucking window, bro. Like, that's just my default reaction. And if that tornado ends up putting me on a t-shirt, then so be it. At least the last position I was in before I died was not the face down, cheeks up pose. But bro, imagine being the kid who poorly timed his piss and now the fire alarm's going off midstream. And you don't even get to know if it's a drill or not. Then there's the whole do you wash your hands dilemma, right? Because cause you don't want to get trapped in the fire and fucking die. But on the other hand... You don't want to just not wash your hands. Because if it's a drill, then, then then you're just left with dirty ass hands. And while you're trying to decide whether to wash your hands or not, the class is outside taking attendance like Rosalina. Here. Jared. Here. Chains. Chains? Oh, fuck. W -w where did Chains go? I don't know, bruh. Shit. Oh, no, nah, no. Nah, I was just in the bathroom. Woo. Oh, you, you scared me there for a second. Wait. Did, did, did you wash your hands? Mm, no. I, I was in a little bit of a rush. <laughs> Get back in there and wash your hands, buddy. Uh... Now, the thing about school drills is they happen pretty often. I mean, every few weeks, they throw in a fire drill here and a little earthquake drill there. So when the fire bell actually goes off, motherfuckers just assume it's a drill. They're out here horsing around, making jokes and shit, while the school's actually getting fucking cremated. But after almost all the drills, our alphabetical single file line goes out to the front of the school and on the field with every other class. And the amount of buffoonery that goes down on this field is insane. Insane, bro. I mean, everyone walks in with a single file line, but after five minutes, that shit looks like a Travis Scott concert, bro. Like, I remember one time my high school got a bomb threat called in, so every class assembled the good old alphabetical line, and we went out onto the field. And we were out there for a minute, bro. I remember looking around, and these motherfuckers were running the world's biggest game of Duck Duck Goose. Like, there wasn't a whole ass bomb threat called into our school. That same day, one kid brought a football to the field, and all of a sudden, Motherfuckers are running a pickup game while we're waiting to see if our school is gonna explode or not. And of course the teachers tried to stop it, but these kids just used it as a diversion play and got another touchdown. Alright, so now that we thoroughly dissected each and every school drill, it's only fair we hit them with a tier list. So let's see what we got here. Uh, oh, oh, we're starting with lockdown drills. What, what are we saying? Uh, fucking F tier. Holy shit, they are ass. <clears throat> All right, uh, ne next up we got fire drills. Now these drills do get the job done, but I'm not gonna lie. I'm not fucking with this whole single file alphabetical bullshit. So I'm gonna have to give this John a C tier. Now tornado drills. Uh, you, you gotta go in the doggy position. Bro, I got no choice but to give this a D tier. And last but not least, my personal favorite, earthquake drills. Th they're still kind of ass b tier and bro i know some of y'all may be thinking you you can't just talk shit about the school drills and, and not present any better solution well 
Lucky for you, I have devised the best and only way to fully counter any natural or artificial disasters. It's simple. For a guy like me who's 7 feet, 325 pounds, 0.5% body fat, and a 7 foot wingspan, I just simply remove myself from the situation. However, I do understand that I am built different. So for your average Joe, I have devised another plan. It's also simple. The moment some shit goes down, everyone runs at full speed out of the building. And of course, some would argue that not everyone is gonna be able to make it out of the building in time and that some people are fast and stronger than others and you know what that's called natural selection you see if i was principal instead of running students through these impractical drills i would be running students through a different kind of drills i would have my students in peak physical condition instead of a fire bell i would have a push-up bell at any given time if that shit goes off you drop down and give me 50 or your ass is getting expelled you see this way when there's a fire everyone can simply remove themselves from the situation or in other circumstances they can simply intervene <laughs> So, a uh, 50,000 word essay, three worksheets, pages 5, 6, 9, 273, 655 in your workbook, and you'll need to make a TED talk you'll present in front of the whole school. What do you want, Chains? What, what, well, how much time do we have? Uh, everything needs to be handed in at 12 p.m. on Thursday, or you'll get a zero. Wait, wait Mr. Cumminson, that, that, that's in two minutes. Actually, it's one minute now. Any other questions? Uh, y yeah, yeah. Can I go to the bathroom? Fuck no. Sit down, Jeremy. Oh, okay, okay. Man, imagine being a high school teacher, bro. Like, as soon as you hit the ripe age of five years old, they throw your ass into school, and you just don't make it out until you're, like, fucking 65. And when I was younger, I always used to wonder, like... Hmm, well, why is Mr. Cumminson so angry all the time? But as I got older, I realized I would be pretty fucking pissed if I was in the exact same spot I was 40 goddamn years ago. Which brings me to the first type of high school teacher, Mr. Angerson. This is the type of motherfucker whose wife divorced him seven years ago and he takes his heartbreak out on the students. What? What was that? Oh, nothing. I, I just had to sneeze. Oh, so you think it's okay to just sneeze in my classroom now? Now, huh? Well, 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 no, I just needed to sneeze. What if I just broke into your house and started sneezing on shit, huh? Well, no, it, that, that's just... M matter of fact, get your ass up here. Yo, th th this isn't the 1950s. You can't just... <clears throat> Linda, come back, please. Now, I don't know how Mr. Angerson continues to keep his job, but it feels like this dude's mission is to ruin the day of every student that walks into his class. Like, he'll be putting in extra effort into his test to make them as confusing as possible. The type of motherfucker to make a multiple choice test with the first four letters all as A. Bro will have me changing the correct answers into the A, B, C, D strategy. Next up, we got Mrs. Talkinson. Some teachers really just don't give a fuck about teaching bro i mean miss talkinson over here she really just wants someone to talk to for real and that's when franklin d roosevelt became president you know actually in high school i had a friend named franklin he was a really nice guy we, we used to go to the movies together and stuff and uh uh, th then he went to jail for, for multiple hate crimes. Like, by the end of the class, you'll know her home life, her family, how she takes her anger out on her children. So me and my classmates would recognize the fact that if we could just keep Miss Talkinson talking, we wouldn't have to do shit all class. So in 1938, Germany invaded Austria. Uh, yes, Chains. Miss Talkinson, um, uh, have you ever been to Germany? Oh my goodness, you, you would not believe what we did in Germany. And for my personal favorite teacher, we got Miss Cakinson. You know, the teacher that is caked up for absolutely no reason. Like, she's got that dump truck for what? I mean, I'll be failing all my classes, rocking with a 1.5 GPA. But I walk into her class... Fuck, all of a sudden I turn into a Miss Cakinson. Uh, actually, you, you forgot the homework for today. Oh my oh, god. Shut up. Oh, I thank you, Chains. I almost forgot. You're welcome, Miss Cakinson. All my homework is done. All my tests are aced. And at any given chance... Ah, oh, Sue, my, my computer isn't working. D does anyone know... What do you need, Miss Cakinson? And I'm there. Miss Cakinson, if you're watching this, just give me a chance, please. And next, you know we got Mr. Questionable. 
Insin. Now I know what you're thinking. Bro's name is a little bit of a mouthful, and that's because he may or may not have a mouthful of little boys. <clears throat> Okay, listen, I'm not here to point fingers at anyone. But if I was to point fingers at someone, it would be fucking him. Like, I'm really not trying to accuse anyone of anything, but there does come a point when some things this man does gets a little... a little questionable. Uh, uh, uh Maya, uh, let me help you. So you put your hand like this, and you... Hmm. OMG, Chains, you will not believe who just followed me on Instagram. Oh, shit, was it, was it at Chains for real? <laughs> No, it, it was Mr. Questionable in Sin. Hmm. Damn, brother, this test was hard as fuck. Yeah, bro, literally everyone failed that shit. Facts, bro, what did you get? Yo, I got 22%. What about you? Oh, I got 103%. Being absolutely faded in math class is one thing, but pulling up to school while you're hammered, wasted, absolutely plastered is simply a different ball game. Cause there's lots of people who can properly utilize that Mary Jane on a daily basis. For example, tattoo artists. In fact, I feel like majority of tattoo artists would say, it uh, it helps me work better, dude. And I would happily trust this man to do his best work knowing he's baked as shit, however, if this dude was wasted, it's a little bit of a different story. Uh, alrighty, dude. All done. Yo, I, I asked for a rose, bro. <clears throat> and because of this reason, you would truly have to be a dumbass to go to school drunk. Chains, but the, the title of the video says going to school drunk. I did it, bro. I, I went to school drunk. But listen, it was no ordinary day at school. No. In fact, I didn't even go in the day at all. I went drunk to the school dance. Meaning this story takes place when the boys and I were in grade 11. It was a Thursday night, the night of winter ball. And as the boys and I were getting ready, y you know, looking like some distinguished young gentleman, I had realized, damn. N none of us have any girls to take to the dance. Fuck, you're right. That means we're gonna have to ask a girl to dance, bro. What? What? You mean? You mean like, 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 talk to them? Yeah. If only we knew someone with a bigger roster than a cheerleading team. S someone with more hoes than a shed. S someone who pulls more tens than EDP. It's Bob. So me and Billy started analyzing Bob. Like, like, how does he pull so many girls, bro? Is it the jawline? Uh, I, I don't know. What about the silky, smooth, clear skin? Uh, maybe. Or is it those succulent, luscious, kissable lips? It's the glasses. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, the glasses. Yeah. So we stole Bob's entire flow in the hopes this would put an end to my drought of Bitches. So we, we check ourselves out in the mirror and then we hop into Billy's whip. We throw on some Rihanna to get us hyped and before we knew it, we had arrived at school. Now to really paint the picture, it was a Thursday at 8pm. And on this Thursday at 8pm, Billy pops his trunk to pull out two bottles of vodka. Now, if you were unaware, it was currently a Thursday at 8pm on a school night and we were headed into our school. Now logically, I, I should have simply denied the alcohol, but I'ma keep it a buck. The whole idea of walking up to a girl and asking her to dance was really giving me the heebie-jeebies. I mean, my palms were sweaty, my knees were weak, and arms were heavy, so I took a big old chug of that liquid courage in order to ease the nerves a little bit. And shit, Billy must have been feeling the same way because Billy was down in that shit like it was water. And right after we consumed enough alcohol to kill a baby elephant, I got a notification on my phone. Oh shit, I, I got an email. Oh, oh, it's from the school. It says, if you come to the winter ball under the influence of alcohol or any drug, you will face suspension and will lose your right to walk across the stage for graduation. Fuck. Fuck. Okay, listen, if we can get into the dance before this shit hits, we're chilling. All right, we got this. So we walk into the school looking fresh as hell, but then I notice a fat line of students, and this line led to a security check 
to get into the dance. Fuck, that, that that's not good. No, no, no we're, we're chilling. I still don't even feel anything. What about you? Yeah, yeah same, same. We're, we're good, we're good. And just as we came to the consensus that we were good, the principal starts walking down the line in our direction. Fuck, act cool, act cool. We're, we're good, act cool. <laughs> that was close. You three, over here. Shit, fuck, fuck, shit. Do you guys know why I called you over here? Mm -mm. Nah. Nope. <clears throat> I smelled alcohol the moment I walked past you three. Now, I don't know if it was one of you or all of you, but you know the consequences of showing up under the influence, right? Yeah, yeah we do, yeah. we do. And tell me. Is it or is it not suspicious that all three of you guys showed up with glasses on? Nah, nah we vicious. just thought it That's looked suspicious. Really? Mm -mm. Take them off. Damn, yes, right. sir. And although I downed a sizable amount of vodka, it still hadn't kicked in yet. Now, I didn't want to do this to you guys, but look at my finger. This motherfucker starts waving around his magic finger in Billy's face with a flashlight to somehow see if he's drunk. Now, I don't know what the plan was, but... I was fucking scared. Mmm. Okay. He's not bad. Oh, okay. He's good. Now let's see here. And just as this motherfucker puts his finger in my face, that vodka hits, bro. I'm using all the strength I got to keep my balance while I'm getting blinded by this flashlight. Hmm. Let me try that again. Huh. Uh, I got a little feeling you guys drank, but uh, it hasn't fully kicked in yet. I'll check up on you in a little yeah, bit. Yeah, th that's good. <laughs> yeah. So we get to security and they make sure to pat us down. Uh, a, a little bit too good. But before we knew it, we were at the dance. And just like that, I saw my opportunity and I put that liquid courage to use. And you know, I'm very articulate when it comes to words. So I ask, hi, uh, <laughs> how are you? <laughs> oh, hey, I'm good. So I, want, I wanted to ask you... Uh, like, you, you know, we're at the dance, and uh, I saw you, so I walked over here. Uh, here we are, you know what I mean? So, like, do you want do you want to dance? <laughs> yeah, sure. It had worked. My plan had finally worked. And just as I was about to feel the female touch I'd been deprived of for all these years, I see Mr. Principal walking in my direction with his finger ready and his flashlight in hand. So I just haul ass and I don't stop hauling ass until I'm off school grounds. So the moral of the story is don't go to school drunk, bro. High school bathrooms have to be one of the most unorthodox places in the entire world. Walking into the bathroom, you have absolutely no clue what to expect. And honestly, that's the best part. I remember one time I had walked into the bathroom, you know, to, to take a piss. And when I had opened the door, I was not surprised to see some motherfucker getting his head shaved bald. And these dudes were so casual about it too. Yo, what's up? What up? <clears throat> And you know, it's cool and all to be able to be entertained while you're trying to release your bodily fluids. But I mean, sometimes you just want some peace and quiet because you truly never know when something like this can happen to you. <laughs> and that is precisely why I'm scared to ever shit in the school bathroom. And listen, my school bathroom has always been bad, but these TikTok trends that keep popping up made the bathroom situation so much worse. Yo, look at this TikTok. <laughs> that's that's kind of funny. Run meet later. Damn, someone took the soap dispensers. Who snatched the blow dryers, bruh? Where the fuck did the urinals go? One hour later. Hold up. Who hit a lick on the bathroom? These TikToks had the school announcements like, Guys, I'm begging you, stop with the devious licks. If you see anyone hitting a devious lick in the bathroom, report it to the office immediately. And I'm not gonna lie, this trend was low-key pointless. Like, once you go home, the fuck are you gonna do with a broken blow dryer, bruh? But there was one TikTok bathroom trend that was fire. So, what is the square root of pi? Uh, chains. 
Oh uh, yeah, can I go to the bathroom? Uh, be quick. <laughs> Am I tripping or did I just hear- <laughs> Yeah, bro. Bathroom functions are a 10 out of 10 TikTok trend. Hey man, if you're still in high school, I recommend trying it. Anyways, I've obviously never been in the girls' washroom before, but I be seeing way too many TikToks filmed in there. Like, is it just a normal thing for girls to go to the washroom while other girls are just in there hitting the renegade? Like, I wouldn't know. But that whole situation seems a little bit awkward to me. <laughs> Wait, renegade, 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 renegade. And when it comes to most public schools, the washroom is like the black market of the school. So there's always some dude trying to sell you something. Yo, you need anything right now? I got that Gandalf OG, that Alaskan Thunder, some purple monkey balls, got those Girl Scout cookies. Hey man, just give me a second. I'm kind of busy right now. I got that Sour Diesel, that Granddaddy Purple Deluxe. Trust me, this stuff will blow your socks off. And every once in a while, someone will bring boxing gloves. All of a sudden, the school bathroom turns into the octagon. People are getting knocked out drop and getting hit with the guillotine chokehold but as soon as a teacher walks in skipping class in high school is a slippery slope like one day you can skip and it'll slide no problem like Oh, hey, buddy. Well, welcome back. Uh, we missed you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you skipped two days? You're chilling. Hey, look who's back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. But when you go to class after skipping three days, all of a sudden shit is serious. Chains, what? why haven't you been here, huh? Well, you, you know, it, it was some family stuff. Oh, yeah, family stuff. What family stuff? What, what, I, I don't really want to talk about what family stuff. It was my grandma's funeral. Damn. But, but that is no reason to miss a test. And Lord forbid, if you miss a whole week, the school board turns into the FBI. Like during the whole pandemic, one of my homies refused to go to any online classes. And one day he was enjoying his extended vacation while smoking up outside his crib. Next thing he knows, he's making direct eye contact with his science teacher while smoking grass. And because they started going FBI mode when you skip your classes, the homies discovered a top secret method so we could skip classes with zero consequences. So when you would skip a class, the teachers would instantly hop on their laptops and whip up an email along the lines of, Mrs. For Real, are you aware that your son Chains has missed his science class today? If this is continued, Chains' grade will continue to drop which might ultimately lead to him failing my class. Mr. Perkinson. Now, Mr. Perkinson would write these emails with the hopes of my mom reading them and then beating my ass. When it really went like, my mom would read it and she would politely ask me how my science class was today. I would cap my ass off and then she would proceed to beat my ass. And one day after I got my shit whooped, I was talking to the homie Bob. Yo, we're going to Chipotle next class. You trying to come? Man, I don't know. I'm getting real tired of these ass whoopings, bro. Ass whoopings? You're, you're getting ass whoopings? Yeah, bro. Mr. Perk never fails to type up an email that results in the leather belt. Oh, what? N nobody ever told you about the secret method? Secret method? Uh oh, you mean like wearing extra pants so the belt doesn't hit so hard? No, I'm, I'm talking about the secret method so Mr. Perkinson's can't email your mom. You, what? You, wh why didn't you tell me sooner, bro? So essentially, the method starts at the very beginning of the school year. At my school, they would give you this form with your parents' email, phone number, all the contact information, you know what I'm saying? You would need this form filled out and signed by a parent or guardian and then handed into the office. However, this man, Bob, conceptualized one of the greatest plans of our generation. And it went like this. So you would receive the empty form from the school, take it home to your parent slash guardian, get that shit filled out and get that signature. Then secretly, when nobody is watching, you hop on your computer, you make a fake email like 
Bob's mom 123 at gmail.com. Then you would change your mom's contact information into that fake ass email and then deliver it to the office like nothing happened. So when Mr. Parkinson smartass tries to get me whooped with one of those emails, I get that shit in my inbox. I read it through and respond with some shit like, Dear Mr. Perkinsons, thank you very much for bringing this to my attention. I was unaware of my son's absence in pursuing his educational prowess. I will discipline him with a punishment that may or may not involve me whooping the absolute shit out of his tushy. Thank you, Mr. Perkinsons. And I already know this dude, Mr. Perkinsons, was reading that email like, Oh, yup, he is definitely getting his ass beat tonight. Meanwhile, I was typing that shit up in bed while munching on some nachos. So you best believe I was abusing this newly found secret strategy. I mean, I was missing every other class. And it was just all sunshine and rainbows. But you know what they say. It's not all sunshine and rainbows. I mean, I really don't recommend using this strategy. And I'm not saying that to be some mature role model. I say that because there was one flaw in the strategy Bob forgot to tell me. And that was as soon as my mom saw my report card with all those absences. God damn. She made up for every single beating I missed. Oh Yo. shit. Ooh, yeah. Damn. That's why you don't damn. mess with me. Yo, I'm yeah. Jordan Johnson. Uh, Mr. Johnson, why did you beat Kyle's ass? M M Mr. Principal, I never touched Kyle. I in fact, I've never seen this kid in my entire life. <clears throat> How do you presume he received a concussion, two broken ribs, a black eye, a broken nose, and a dislocated shoulder? I, I mean, he must have fallen down the stairs or something. Okay, Mr. Johnson. How do you explain this? That's why you don't mess with me. I'm Jordan Johnson. But I, I, I mean, I mean, you got the wrong Jordan Johnson. Then uh, what, what happened to your knuckles there? Shit, th these ain't even my knuckles. Listen, I am not one to condone violence, but I'm not gonna lie. School fights are a major part of the high school experience. I mean, there's something about a good old school brawl that just boosts students' morale. Like, there is nothing that gets you through the rest of the day like some kid getting his ass beat in front of the entire school. And truthfully, it's just a community building experience because it gives everyone something to talk about. Yo, did you see the fight? Yeah, bro, Kyle got his shit rocked. Wait, are you guys talking about the fight? Yeah, bro. Man, Kyle got fucked up, dude. Overall, in school fights, everyone wins. Like, the fighter gets some respect and the crowd gets some entertainment. It's a win-win. What, what about what about me? <clears throat> but tell me why when a fight breaks out, the entire school will be recording, but not one person can get a good video. It's like when a fight breaks out, every motherfucker recording starts having severe hand spasms. I mean, as the person recording the fight, you literally have one job. To record the fight. Damn, I just missed it. What happened? Oh, well, lucky for you, I recorded the entire thing from start to finish on my brand new Samsung. Check it out. Uh, did, did anyone else record the fight? Oh, shit, yeah, I did on my, my brand new iPhone 14 that actually records in 4K. Okay, bet. Ooh, oh, damn. Let's go, JJ. That's why you don't mess with me. But bro, there's, there's just a video of your face for eight minutes straight. And watching some of these fights are funny as hell. Because some motherfuckers will come in swinging like KSI. Some motherfuckers are out here thinking they're Daniel LaRusso. And some motherfuckers should just not be fighting. Which is honestly the best part. Because where else could you catch a 6'5", 250 pound big body scrapping some 5'2 nerd? Like, the UFC would never let that shit slide. Plus, you get to watch it all for free. But me personally, I've never gotten into a school fight. But don't get me wrong, if someone wanted to catch these hands, I could hit them with the little knuckle sandwich if you know what I mean. But truth be told, I could never lose a fight. N not because I know how to fight, but because for Bob, shit was on sight. And trust me, 
You don't fuck with Bob. Bob's got a better record than Floyd Mayweather. And I even heard one time he got into a little altercation with Mike Tyson. All I'ma say is, <clears throat> He dealt with him. But with that being said, we all know that one kid in school who was born to simply beat people's ass. Like this dude's life purpose was to run people's fade. And of course, I had someone like this at my school. He was the type of dude who had nothing to lose. So he would instigate a fight wherever he could. We'll just call him Jordan. And honestly, he was holding a solid record. I mean, he was probably 12 and 0. But one day, Jordan picked on the wrong kid. Hey nerd, take off those stupid glasses. And Bob was a man of little words, so Jordan's buffoonery did not phase him. Hey nerd, I, I said take off those stupid glasses. Hey, stop ignoring me. And without saying a word, Bob just ended Jordan's whole career. And ever since that day, nobody messed with Bob. That's why you don't Damn. mess with me, yo. I'm Jordan <laughs> Johnson. Listen, I know some of y'all have already gone to school high, but for those of you who haven't, don't do it, bro. I only went to school baked one time in my life, and after that experience, I never did it again. So, this story takes place on your average Wednesday. I was still in grade 10 at this point, but I have to note, I was not a super experienced smoker. However, with that being said, I did have some homies in grade 11 that let's just say they knew what they were doing. But still, my day started off like your average high schooler. Alarm goes off, hit snooze for 15 minutes, get up, stare at the wall for approximately 10 minutes, shower, eat, and head to school. This particular day, I remember being a little bit anxious because I knew I had to present my speech that I had just written the night before. But pff, English is at the end of the day, I'm chilling for now. Plus, my first class is PE. So you know how it goes. I smoked some kids in dodgeball. I went to my next class, got smoked in math. The bell rings and I dip for lunch. Guys, See y'all boys. Guys, the, yeah, the yeah, peace out, man. I, I do. So I link up with the gang for lunch, and we kind of mob around the school for a minute, but we end up just chilling in this forest right outside our school. And this is when one of my experienced friends whips out that Zaza. We'll just call him Jimmy for now. Jimmy just asks everyone, are you dudes trying to smoke? Yeah, for sure. Hell yup. Nah, I'm, I'm all good. At first, I was the only person who didn't want to. But as I sat there, feeling the vibes, in taking the positive energy from the surrounding vegetation, I came to the conclusion the vibes were right. It was just me and my trusted homies secluded in a peaceful area. I mean, what's the worst that could happen, right? And man, when it comes to drinking, I'm a certified heavyweight champion. But for whatever reason, when it came to smoking, I had the tolerance of a newborn baby. But then again, what would I look like taking this lil ass inhale? So I did what any dumbass individual would do. <sighs> Yo, look at Chains. Yo, chill, dude. <coughs> Damn. <coughs> so my friends are low key hyping me up. And I'm out here thinking, I am such a cool guy. I am, I am literally that guy. I'm literally that guy. But much like everything else, everyone forgot about it in five minutes. But I'm still left with all this tetrahydrocannabinol compounds waiting to alter my neural chemistry. So as we're walking back to the school, the THC raids my brain like the FBI. FBI open up! And I just eat the ground, bro. Had me looking like my controller just disconnected. And my friends just look at each other like, fuck, maybe you should just go home, bro. Yeah, dude. There's no way you'll be able to go to class like this. So we make our way over to this bench outside and I'm weighing out my options. I'm trying to find the best scenario to get out of this alive. I narrowed it down to roughly two options. I can either go home, get whooped by my mom and get grounded for another year and a half or I could thug it out, just go to class, running the risk that my teacher might find out I'm baked. So me and my friends are brainstorming, using the good old pros and cons method, going home. Pros, cons, I will get whooped. Staying at school, pros, cons, I might get whooped. Staying at school it is. The bell rings, my friends wish me good luck, but my next class was science and I had the number one homie in that class. 
Bob. So Bob is just being a W man's. He's absolutely carrying me in this group science experiment while I'm literally passed out sleeping on the desk. Bell rings. Bob wishes me good luck and dips. Now I'm all on my own, but I just got one more class. I'm almost done. What class do I even have again? Oh, oh yeah, English, right? So I make my way to English. I sit down. All right. So today we're doing our speeches. Speeches. And my English teacher was the type of teacher who loves to catch people lacking and just put them on the spot. So of course, he sees me on another planet and decides to call me out. Uh, Chains, uh, how about you go first? Uh, I'm not, I'm not prepared. Just get up there, bud. Uh, okay. All right, whenever you're ready. <clears throat> Ch Chains, you, you can start now. Uh, okay. So, so my, my speech, it, like, it's about the, the topic of the, of the speech, it's dinosaurs. So, t, 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 t sorry, 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 t, 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 Tyrannosaurus Rex has short arms. <clears throat> yeah, it changed, don't worry about it, you can sit down, you could, you could just go tomorrow, it's alright. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah, man, this is why you don't show up to school high, bro. Hello class, I'm Mr. Subinson. I'll be your sub for today. Uh, for rules, I don't want to see any horseplay, no phones, and no WWE wrestling moves off the top of the desk, alright? Walking into class and then seeing a substitute teacher is like the same feeling as squaring up to fight a dude. And then finding out that dude's blind, bro, like you pretty much just gotta show up. And you win. Like, I honestly feel bad for these substitutes, bro, because every day they have no clue what they're showing up to. Like, one day they're walking into a class full of angels, and the next day they're fighting for their life in a class of straight demons, bro. I mean, being a substitute teacher is all about confidence. Like, the moment the sub walks into the class, they're being analyzed. Like, the way they walk, how they dress, and especially how they talk. Yo, if the first thing they say sounds like, <clears throat> uh, hey, hi guys. It's raps. It's raps, bro. If you start the class sounding like an intro to an eight-year-old's minecraft let's play papers gonna be thrown pencils are gonna be thrown fucking dudes are gonna be thrown like it's gonna be straight anarchy bro but when the sub walks in the room with a little pep in his step a little drip in his fit and most importantly he starts the class sounding like he's done this shit before hey guys uh i'm mr peppinson and uh today we mean business all of a sudden people are listening everyone except for one man the class Class clown. He's gonna see that confidence as a challenge, and bro's gonna start testing the waters to see if this sub is really about it. And that is how y equals mc squared. Any questions? Yeah, uh, blue hat. Yeah, uh, Mr. Pepinson, why are you built like that? Oh, you mean built like the rock? Yeah, these are these are called muscles. Um, you'll learn about them when you hit puberty. But, but bro, I I'm in grade 11. I I've already hit puberty. Yeah, nah. That that that's not what your peach fuzz mustache is telling me, buddy. Uh, okay, well, your hairline is telling me it's going on a vacation, bruh. Uh, all right, let's see your shit then. Uh, yeah, yeah, like, it's not bad. <laughs> like, some substitutes are so good, you just wish they were your real teacher. Like, I remember one time in grade 10, I had this math class with one of those teachers who used to yap the whole time and then assign a bunch of homework with five minutes left in class. And then one day, a go walked into our class, a go who went by the name of Mr. G, or more formally, G-Dog. Now, G-Dog was packing a mean 68 years in his lifespan. However, he had the utmost pep in his step, paired with the drippiest of fits. And he was the type of dude who would lay down some respectable rules, and if anyone broke them, he wouldn't get mad. He would just simply flame the living shit out of you in front of everybody. And that's how you calculate the surface area area of oh oh uh no no text while i'm talking please i'm just texting my mom oh wow that's uh that's crazy uh how, how's she doing Psh, wouldn't you like to know <laughs> oh yeah i mean i, I would actually because uh she's probably pretty tired after last night i mean i did lay down some mean dick but there are definitely some questionable substitutes out there i remember when i was in grade six my entire middle school was just weird bro my recess was called nut break my music teacher was deaf and our principal was damn near bipolar all right who told the blind kid he could say the n-word okay all right it was me but like i didn't think he would actually say it 
<laughs> oh, no, that's, a, that's actually a pretty good one. I mean, uh, I gotta give it to you, kid. <laughs> uh, wait, wait, wait. So, so you're not uh, mad? No, no, I'm fucking furious, okay? Get in my office right now. Okay, wait, I, I thought you were just laughing. What's going on right now? <laughs> Yo, I'm just messing with you, kid. You're good to go. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Good to go out of the school, cause you're expelled! That is absolutely unacceptable! <laughs> uh, are, are you joking, or- Does it sound like I'm joking? I, I, yeah, kinda. Yeah, bro, my middle school was weird as hell, so I can't say I was surprised when a substitute teacher walks into my class talking about- Uh, hello class, uh, I'm Mrs. Hutchinson, and, uh, I identify as a mermaid. And I'm only 12 years old, so I'm like, dog. What the actual fuck does identify me? But bless Miss Hutchinson's heart, man, cause Lord knows middle schoolers weren't gonna take that shit seriously. <laughs> oh, she's funny, oh, mermaid. <laughs> no, 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 class. Uh, I'm serious. Oh, so, so that's why you smell like the ocean. Exactly. Wait, 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 no, wait, wait, what? And I remember one time this sub walked into our class and I could have swore they just found this motherfucker on the side of the street, bro. He walked in sagging like crazy. And if he even went to school, this motherfucker most definitely cheated his way through, bro. Uh, yo, hey class. Uh, so, uh, like, what are we doing today? I, I mean, shit, uh, you're, you're the teacher. Oh, uh, yeah, right. Um, so, w what'd you guys learn about yesterday? Uh, we, we were learning about agriculture. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think you're right, too, because, you know, the culture we live in right now is very angry. And um, the anger culture just needs to, like, like take a chill pill. You know what I'm saying? Um, any questions about that? Uh, yeah, um, what's a chill pill? Oh, yup, I'm glad you asked. Okay, see, I actually know a guy who can hook you up with some. Just, just meet me in the parking lot at lunch. Uh, Mr. Sagginson, are are you trying to sell us drugs right now? No, 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 no. I... I well, I mean, yeah, but but it's for chemistry with neuroscience or I mean, I mean, like for microbiology or, or something like that. And these substitute teachers seem to butcher every single name on the attendance. I mean, shit's got to be on purpose at this point. Like, uh, hello, class. Uh, I'm just going to do some attendance really quick. Uh, correct me if I get your name wrong. OK, um, uh, Horda Hansa is uh, is Horda Hansa here. OK, uh. Uh, I mean, my name's Jordan Johnson. Well, you're absent now, so you gotta speak up sooner next time. Wait, what the fuck? Maya? Is, is Maya present? Uh, it's, it's Mia. Wow, <laughs> quite the name you got there. It's spelled kind of weird, no? No, it's not. It's literally three letters. Ariana? Is Ariana here? Um, s sorry, it's Ariana. Okay, and? Like, like what's your point? Well, I, th th that's just how it's pronounced. Uh, Juan? Is there a Juan in the room? It's Juan. No, oh Juan! And some subs be walking into your class with the most bullshit rules ever. Like, uh, hey, Mr. Subinson, uh, can I go to the washroom? Uh, does your teacher usually let you go to the washroom? Uh, I mean, I mean, yeah, I think you legally have to. Oh, bu 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 bu. uh, I don't believe it. Uh, sit your ass down and get to work. Uh, wait, Mr. Subinson, uh, respectfully, I'm about to shit my pants here. Uh, well, wait, does your teacher usually let you do that? What, shit my pants? Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, I'll allow it. Hey, what the yo. fuck is this guy? And I feel like there's no greater sense of community among a class than when a substitute teacher comes in. The entire class just comes together to gaslight the fuck out of this poor substitute. I remember one time in grade 10, me and my homie had a sub come in who was giving us this multiple choice test. And my homie was the type of dude who'd be getting zero percents on everything. And the way his grades were looking, he just couldn't afford to fail another test. So what he did, I just need to preface, I do not condone. But from the moment the teacher walked in, he acted like he he needed a little extra help. You know what I'm saying? And to be honest, he put on a spectacular performance. I mean, someone either needs to get this man an Oscar or a diagnosis, bro. And I just acted normal, but I guess by proxy, I got a little extra help. And I don't know what that says about me, but I do know what it means. It means the substitute teacher walked out of that class happy she was able to help two students in need. And it also means me and my homie both walked out of that class with 100% on our tests. Man, way back when, there was a time when you couldn't catch anyone under the age of 30 chief in a vape. Until one day at Vaporizer Laboratories, they were cooking up and made a flavor that would change the game forever. Cotton candy. Now this revolutionary flavor forced these grown ass 30 year old men to take a good look in the mirror and ask themselves, Damn, 
What do I look like as a grown ass man sucking on this goddamn cotton candy stick? So they do what any responsible adult would do. They give it to their children. I mean, shit, kids love cotton candy. All of a sudden, business is booming for vaporizer laboratories, so they start cooking up even harder. Boom, Sour Patch Kids juice. Boom, applesauce juice. And boom, baby food juice. These babies will be sucking that shit like a soother. Kids' first words will be looking like. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, honey. Jackson's yeah. gonna say his first yeah. words. Yeah. Oh, let's hear it. Yo. Y yo, Pops. Well, let me bum a hit off that 50 Nick Guava Ice, G. Yo, just wait till they drop that breast milk flavor, bro. Shit, these newborn babies won't even know what hit them. They'll be returning customers for life, which. Which will probably be like 12 years max. Now, the reason I say all this is to let you know that vaping not only intruded my high school years, but also my years in middle school. I was first introduced to these bad boys at the ripe age of 13. And with a little bit of that good old peer pressure, I folded, bro. Like, what was I supposed to do, bro? Like, like not take the hit? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I probably should not have taken a hit. But from that point on, I started doing a little dabbling, you know. I, I mean, as a 13-year-old, there's only one answer to someone asking. <laughs> Yo, dude, you want to try a hit of this blueberry guacamole milkshake ice flavor, dude? And that answer is absolutely, fucking -lutely, dude. And I was never a fiend or anything, but I will say, I popped a few ghosts and blown a few O's back in my day. But it had never gotten to the point of me owning a vape until... Until one day. This story takes place way, way, way back in grade 7. Me and the boys were posted in science class dissecting cow balls or some shit when Mr. Principal burst through the door like, Is Tessa here? Yeah, yeah, she's right there. And I look at Tessa and she just tosses her vape over to her homie, Kate. And I seen that shit clear as day, but Mr. Principal's old ass must have forgot to wear his contacts or something. Cause he runs a quick pat down on Tessa looking for said vape, but sure enough, he doesn't find it. Miss Rhodes told me you were vaping in her class, is this true? No, I would never. <clears throat> uh, okay. And then the bell rang and everybody knew what that meant. It was nut break. Now, I don't know who the fuck decided to name our recess nut break, but I will say most of the students understood that that shit was short for nutrition break. However, some kids took it a little too literally. Weird ass school, man. But this specific nut break, you best believe me and the boys weren't busting nuts or eating nutritional foods because Billy had something else on his mind. Yo, who's got you smiling like that? Who, me? <laughs> nah, nah, nah. It's nobody. It's nobody. Yo, wait. You got a crush on Tessa? <laughs> what? T Tessa? <laughs> me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I got a crush on. Yeah. Oh, shit. Go, go talk to her, bro. <laughs> talk to her. <laughs> no. No, uh, no, bro. It's simple. She's new to the school. She's probably looking for some friends. So just, just walk over, introduce yourself. <sighs> You're right. I, I'm, I'm just gonna do it. Yes, sir. Hey, I, 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 I just. I, I, did I just sell that shit? Yep. Y you did. Then the bell rings and we all go to PE class. Now in my middle school, your class was your class. You just have the same students and the same underqualified teacher teaching everything. Like, Lord knows Mr. Donaldson shouldn't be teaching PE, but shit. Here we are. And so while we're playing dodgeball, I'm trying to coach Billy on how to confess his love for Tessa, but I'ma keep it a buck. I was speaking straight out of my ass, bro. I, I don't know the first thing about confessing love. Listen, bro, I'm the expert when it comes to confessing love. All you gotta do is walk up with confidence, introduce yourself, and then ask her to be your girlfriend, bro. <sighs> okay, simple. Let let's practice. <clears throat> hey, Vanessa, <laughs> my name's Billy and, um, did do you want to be my girlfriend? Damn! And after the proper training, by the time lunch came around, Billy was prepared to do what had to be done. I right, listen, bro. Whatever happens out there, me and Bob got your back. And remember, the worst she can say is no, bro. <sighs> Alright, I'm ready. You got this. Uh, hey, Vanessa. I I'm Billy. Um, I, I seen you in science class today, and you were looking very pretty. And, um, is it do you want to... Do you want to be my girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck no. <laughs> she laughed, bro. She laughed in Billy's face. And he walks back to us with tears in his eyes. 
She laughed at me, bro. Well, at least at least you you know what they say. What what? If if you can make her laugh and giggle, you can make the cheeks clap and jiggle. Not right now, bro. You're right. Too soon. Too soon. Needless to say, that brother Billy went home that night, listened to Juice World, and cried himself to sleep. Shit, the next day, Billy didn't even say a word, but I could hear lucid dreams on full blast in those earbuds. Man, it's a tough sight to see. Next thing I know, Mr. Principal bursts in the class talking about, All right, Tessa, in my office right now. Now, I don't know why she was in trouble, but whatever she was accused of, she's guilty, bro. And she's also guilty on one third degree count of breaking my man's heart. And as I'm busy praying on Tessa's downfall, I get a little tap on my shoulder like, Psst, take this. Mr. Principal's looking for it, and he's not gonna check you. Who, whose is it? It's Tessa's. Don't worry, it's safe with me. And it was safe with me, cause that shit was now mine. The only way she could get it back is if she repaired my boy Billy's heart, and that just wasn't happening. And soon enough, Tessa comes back from Mr. Principal's office, and she didn't say a word. We had nut break, nothing. We went to PE, nothing. And then we went to math class. And as I was chilling in math class, calculating the square root of pi and shit, I get a tap on my shoulder again. Psst, Tessa wants her vape back. Vape? What vape? The, the, the one I handed you this morning? You, you know, it, it was purple. And... Oh, that vape. Oh. Yeah, yeah, no, I threw that shit in the bushes. <gasps> so she reports back to the person who gave her the vape, and she reports back to the person who gave her the vape, etc., etc., until Tessa finds out. And she looks pissed. So she whispers to her friend, who whispers to her friend, etc., etc. What, what, what bush did you throw it in? Oh, the... The, the one out back. And to put it in perspective, the bush out back was fucking massive. It was this huge conglomerate of straight prickle bushes. And so pretty much, her vape was gone, bro. And I went to sleep that night with a smile on my face, knowing I not only saved Tessa's lungs, but also Billy's heart. The next day, I went to class, sat down with the boys as always, but something was different. Tessa and her homies were nowhere to be seen. I shrug it off and continue to make some groundbreaking studies in science class until I hear Billy like, bro, no fucking way. So I turn around to not only see Tessa and her friends waist high in prickle bushes looking for this vape, but I also see Mr. Principal forcing them to do it. Now this was truly a beautiful sight to see revenge play out this perfectly. Like Billy was sitting at the window the entire class watching him do a whole search party for this vape. That was posted in my pocket. And just when I thought Billy couldn't get happier, the next day, Tessa and her friends had to present a PowerPoint to the entire school on why vaping is bad. Uh, so, uh, vaping is bad because, like, like, uh, when the vape enters your lungs, well, it's not good for your lungs. <laughs> Man, karma is real, because not only did Tessa understand how it felt to be laughed at, but the next day, my friend came up to me like, can I use that vape for the day? And I wasn't using that shit, so I said, yeah, sure. And at the end of the day, you'll never guess what she told me, bro. Yo, you still got the vape? No, no, I, I threw it in the bush out back. <laughs>